<laughs> this is a 2015 video of International Space Station astronauts Scott Kelly, Chell Lindgren and Kimi Yui enjoying a simple salad. Except it's not simple. It's actually the most important salad in human history. Why? Because these ISS astronauts aren't just eating lettuce. They're dining on the first lettuce to be grown and eaten in space. And it's all thanks to this creatively named unit, the vegetable production system, otherwise known as veggie. Now, trying to grow plants in space isn't exactly a new idea. There have been many attempts in the past. In 1997, bean seedlings were grown on the Mir space station. And in 2012, ISS astronaut Don Pettit grew a zucchini plant for a year. He even wrote a blog about it called Diary of a Space Zucchini. And NASA has been looking into crop support systems for over 30 years. But Project Veggie is the first large-scale effort to produce food crops in space, an idea that is going to be critical if we want astronauts to make long-duration missions to places like Mars a reality. In space, if you can get those environmental conditions right, the light, the temperature, the atmosphere, the nutrients and the water, if you can get those right, plants grow pretty well and pretty similarly as they grow on Earth. That was Dr. Joya Massa, who leads the veggie team at the Kennedy Space Center, the group responsible for tackling the challenges of growing plants in space. So far, the biggest of which has been coming up with a way to water plants in a microgravity environment. You don't think about how difficult it is um, to, to water in microgravity or to wash your vegetables or things like that until you start to watch some of these videos of just how water behaves in space. In order to tackle the problem of providing water, nutrients and light to plants within a space environment, the Kennedy Space Center teamed up with Orbital Technologies Corporation to design and build the veggie unit. The hardware uses a passive watering system supported by plant pillows. These pillows are single-use pockets filled with soil substrate and control-released fertilizer. Embedded into the pillow is a moisture-wicking material where seeds can be glued and carefully orientated to ensure that the roots grow down and the shoots grow up. The LED light bank provides red, blue and green light to help plants generate energy and the walls of the whole system can be extended upward, allowing room for growth. It was this low mass modular system that was sent to the ISS in 2014, where an astronaut set the unit up and started to grow lettuce as a test species. The crew also grew zinnia flowers to test the long term survival of flowering crops like tomatoes. Initially, it was a success. The first group of lettuce grown in veggie was sent back to Earth for analysis. After those samples were deemed edible, the ISS astronauts were given the green light to tuck into the second crop of leafy greens, which of course they did. The zinnias, however, were a different story. Shortly after nurturing this bright orange flower, Scott Kelly sent this tweet from the ISS. Our plants aren't looking too good. Would be a problem on Mars. I'm going to have to channel my inner Mark Watney. Despite channeling Mark Watney, Scott's flowering zinnias were dying, and there was nothing he could do about it. We did get fungus growing on the zinnia. We were kind of estimating water volumes for the astronauts to give to the plants, and our estimates were, were not right. And so there was excess water in the plant chamber, and this led to fungus. Now you'll be relieved to know that Scott did manage to save some of his zinnias. And the moldy ones? They were sent back to Massa's team at the Kennedy Space Center who eagerly started analyzing them. We've been doing a lot of research here on the tissue that was brought back to try and understand you know, where this fungus came from and, and how it in, infected these plants so that we will learn for the future. So far, five veggie crops have been harvested on the ISS, and each time the team have learned how to tweak the hardware to support healthy space produce. And aside from fine-tuning veggie to optimize plant health and growth, the team are also experimenting with different levels and intensities of red, blue, and green LED light to make space crops more nutritious and delicious. Now chlorophyll, the pigment involved in generating plant energy via photosynthesis, absorbs red and blue light best. Essentially, these wavelengths help space crops to grow without sunlight. 
Recent studies have also shown a small amount of green light could be important for dense plant growth, particularly in poor light conditions like in deep space. However, getting the light balance just right is still a work in progress. It's a really fun puzzle to figure out, you know, what different plants are doing. You might get higher levels of certain vitamins under blue light. Red light tends to make leafy crops expand more, but it's not, you know, it's not a universal thing. For the most part, these light experiments seem to be yielding delicious results. In early 2017, astronauts Peggy Whitson and Shane Kimbra grew a Chinese cabbage on the ISS, and it was considered the best tasting veggie crop so far. It was a proud moment for those astronauts. And that speaks to another strength of Project Veggie, its ability to boost morale among those stationed on the ISS for long periods of time. They've just been incredible to, to, to watch them work and to watch them grow the plants. We're actually very interested in the human factors and the, the psychological aspects of this. And so that's one of the components of the VEGO4 and VEGO5 experiment will be to do some assessments trying to quantify how much the plants might impact the experience of living in space. Next year, NASA is set to launch the Advanced Plant Habitat the largest plant chamber built so far. The APH shares similar technology to veggie, but will be able to hold larger crops. So who knows? Perhaps the idea of astronauts growing potatoes on Mars might not seem so far-fetched after all. NASA may have plans to make Mars habitable using a giant space magnet. To find out more, watch this episode now. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.